Okay, so we need to get to grips with um, fractional distillation um, because if you remember when crude oil first comes out of the ground, it is a gloopy black mixture of many hydrocarbons and we want to separate it so that we get the, the useful ones out. Um, and again, I'm going to show you some of the things that are um, available to look at online to help you through this process. So I'm starting off um, again with um, BBC Bite Size. Um, and if you Google just um, fractional distillation, you will find that there's a page and they start off telling you about distillation itself because we have to understand what distillation is before we understand why we can use a fractionating column to um, distill, to separate the fractions of crude oil. So if you remember back to key stage three when you learnt about distillation, um, there's a few processes. First of all, you, you start off with a mixture. So here we've got water and ethanol, and they're in a, a round bottom flask here, and we heat it. And when we heat it, um, when we heat liquids, when we reach their boiling point, um, they begin to boil. They, they begin to evaporate, turn into a gas. Okay, so here we've got water and ethanol and we're heating it and the ethanol has a lower boiling point than the water. So the ethanol will begin to boil, will vaporise, will turn into a gas before the water does. So we only have to get to about just around 70 odd degrees Celsius um, before the ethanol starts to boil, whereas water, the boiling point of water is 100 degrees Celsius. So what happens is the ethanol starts to boil. It goes up here, it's a gas, and there's a stopper up here, so it's not going to go any further. It comes down this tube here into um, our column here. Now, because this has a jacket of cold water around it, um, it condenses, the ethanol condenses again. It turns back into a liquid, and what do liquids do when they're in some kind of column that is pointing downwards? They just move down here, um, and we collect it. Another tube here, and if we reach 100 degrees Celsius, um, then the water begins to boil as well, and we can collect that. But at first, oh, here we go, 78 degrees. If we reach 78 degrees, the thermometer says 78 degrees, and the ethanol is coming off and turning into a liquid. Now again, I did a bit of googling because I think it's important to see what happens within this distillation process and um, I found this animation again on the Footprint Science website and if we look here, um, what this shows you, now this is important because I want you to concentrate on what the um, liquid is doing before it begins to boil and we have a mixture here, so these aren't bonded together these different molecules, but there is something that is holding them together into a liquid, and it's something called an intermolecular force. There are intermolecular forces holding these molecules together and keeping them in a liquid. However, if I press play here, if we start to heat this liquid, then it, we are able to overcome those intermolecular forces. We start off here with a mixture held together by intermolecular forces. We heat them, and so the intermolecular forces are overcome, we form a gas, which then um, gets cooled down, turns back into a liquid, and we can collect the liquid. Now this is really important, because if we then start to think about fractional distillation, and here's another brilliant um, animation if you Google fractional distillation um, footprint science, but again, here's the address, then here's a really nice animation from them where they show you what happens in a fractionating column. Now down here, we've got some heat. So because we're heating this at the bottom, it's hotter at the bottom than it is at the top. The temperature is higher down here. Now in comes our crude oil with all sorts of different chains, hydrocarbon chains in it. Here's a really long one, here's a shorter one, and there are some really short chain hydrocarbons. Here's a really short one here that's travelling all the way up. Now if we go back to this picture that we had here of the distillation, if you remember, it's intermolecular forces that are holding these together. That's what makes it a liquid. Now, it's just the same here. This starts off as a, a liquid, and what's holding the chains together is intermolecular forces. 
Now, if you have a really long chain, look at this whopping great one. If you have a long chain like that, it is going to take loads of energy to pull that apart out of the liquid and turn it into a gas. But that also means that even when the temperature is really high, it will potentially condense back again into a liquid. So down here, the long chains condense even at the higher temperatures. Whereas if you have a mini short chain like this, if you have the really short chains, um, they're not held together very strongly at all in the liquid. Um, and so they um, will turn into a gas um, at a very low temperature. But that also means they're going to condense at um, a, a lower temperature. So these travel all the way to the top of the column or further up the column be before they condense. So that means that we have longer chains condensing at the bottom of the column and we have shorter chains condensing at the top of the column. That means that we can separate our chains out um, into the different um, chain lengths, different fractions. Um, and that means if we go back to GCSE Bite Size where it tells you about the fractions of crude oil, we collect all the things like... Here we go, all the fuels are up here. So the, the um, lower, um, the gases, the, the shorter chains, and um, so the gases and the, and the liquids up here, um, the volatile liquids are things like gasoline, petrol, um, refinery gases, and so on. Whereas down here, um, the long chains are the, the kind of very viscous, um, non-volatile um, liquids and, uh, and really gloopy ones like bitumen that we use straight onto the roads, tar-like substances.